Hello, and welcome back to Arcanine Rides. I have a pretty cool video for you today because Highboy has given me the opportunity to give you guys the very first look at their all-new NEX5 electric scooter. It's an interesting and fairly unique scooter with a number of features that you don't often see in other electric scooters, so let's take a look at it. First off, this model was provided to me at no cost by Highboy for this review, but as always, no part of this review is paid for or sponsored, and all thoughts and opinions are my own. If you like the NEX5, then you can grab it at one of the links below, either from Highboy's website or from Amazon. So let's start with the design of this scooter, no doubt the first thing that stands out to you when you see it. This scooter comes in two colors, a pretty standard all black, and this flashy black and yellow. The angular chunky design plus this color scheme really gives me transformer vibes, and I think that lots of people will like that about this scooter. I personally favor the sleeker, more subtle scooter designs and colors, but there are a lot of scooters out there like that, so the NEX5 offers a unique design choice. Overall build quality seems good, in fact the scooter almost seems over-armored with lots of reinforcement and angular body panels. Let's start from the top of the scooter and work our way down, and I'll talk about features, components, and designs for each section of the scooter, then we'll jump into performance. The handlebars and display are fixed in place with the display sitting in the middle of the bars. The handlebar width is actually really decent on this scooter. I often take issue with the width of fixed handlebars like these, but these are wider than other fixed bars that I've used. In the time that I've ridden and tested this scooter, I haven't felt like they need to be any wider. On the right side of the handlebars you have just the accelerator, a very standard thumb throttle that I can't complain about, which also has the power button built into it. And on the left you have just the single brake lever which activates both the rear mechanical disc brake and the regenerative braking. The display shows fairly basic information, current speed, riding mode, and battery level, but then also has a cool feature that I've never seen on another scooter, these scaling bars that reflect the throttle and brake activation. The harder you press either one, the taller the bar lights up. I can't say it's particularly useful, especially while riding, but it is unique and interesting. The power button on the throttle is used to turn on the scooter with a long press. A short press turns on the lights, and a double press changes the riding mode. There are four riding modes, full manual kick mode, then one, two, and three modes with the top speed mode being three. I found that there is little reason to ride in any other mode than three, but if you really need to cap your top speed, then ride modes one and two are there. The included handlebar grips are pretty awful. Just five minutes on the scooter was all it took for the grips to start sliding off. The grips also strangely smell super strong of gasoline. They leave your hands smelling like gas after every time you use the scooter. Luckily the grips are by far the easiest thing to replace on a scooter, and I would have replaced them quickly anyway despite the gasoline smell. Definitely order a pair of locking grips with the NEX5, and replace the stock grips right away if you get this scooter. Let's look now at the section of the scooter that stood out to me the most when I first saw this scooter, the particularly thick steering tube. This steering tube, or stem, is so wide due to the NEX5's main and probably most appealing unique feature, the second removable battery. This scooter comes standard with two 36 volt 7.5 amp hour batteries, one in the deck of the scooter and the second in the stem. The stem battery can be removed and charged in the included stand, or you can charge the scooter normally from this port. If you are only regularly using half or less of your full battery capacity, then you can just bring the removable battery in every day and charge it with the stand. Otherwise, you will still have to charge the scooter normally. Highboy claims the scooter gets 34 miles of range with the double battery setup, but I will be testing this in my upcoming range test. The battery is popped out using this slider. It looks like you're supposed to be able to lock the battery in, but I think my lock is jammed because no matter how I spin the key, it doesn't lock the slider. Not a big deal for me since I'm not worried about the battery getting randomly stolen, and the battery stays in securely even when unlocked. The stem of this scooter leads down into the front wheel which is equipped with the scooter's single 350 watt hub motor. Both wheels are equipped with 8.5 inch solid tires, which I think is the right choice for this level of scooter. No one wants to have to worry about flats on a scooter that is designed to be used as a commuting scooter. The scooter comes with just rear suspension. The front wheel looks like it has some small suspension, but this is just a dust cover for the stem to wheel connection. 
The rear suspension is pretty meager, but quite normal for scooters at this price level, so I didn't really expect anything different. The riding platform is a decent size with good length, especially with the rear footrest. The rear footrest seems to support riding weight with no issues. The rubberized tread on the decks makes for decent grip and does not seem like it'll peel off easily. The folding mechanism is unlike any I've seen before and it took me a second to figure out how to operate it. However, once you know how it works, it's super easy and quick to fold and unfold and is a very sturdy and solid locking mechanism. I have no worries about it long term. The scooter folds down to a reasonable size to fit in any car but has surprising weight due to the double battery and extra reinforcement. You would not be able to comfortably carry this scooter for any extended period of time, so keep this in mind if you need to carry around your scooter often. Oh my gosh, this, this scooter's not super easy to carry, is it? The folding mech does keep the scooter from unfolding when locked down, so you can carry the scooter by the stem, which is nice. The kickstand is unique and folds up into the scooter, putting it out of the way, but popping it out with your foot can be a little hard to do. I found myself having to bend over to use the foot for the kickstand more often than I would have liked. The NEX5 has its own app, which allows you to change the ride mode and turn on the light from your phone. You can also use the app to switch the units you want the scooter to display, and whether or not you want cruise control to activate. Okay, let's talk about performance. This scooter has a top speed of about 20 miles an hour. The top speed is really decent for the price, but the acceleration is a bit slower than expected due to the heavier weight. The higher weight is largely due to the second battery, so you are essentially trading some acceleration and braking time for longer range. This is effectively double the range of the NEX5's younger brother, the NEX3, which is also sold by Highboy. The double braking system is effective enough at stopping, though it's not amazing, and the back disc brake did need a little adjustment before it stopped me properly. The scooter struggled the most on hills around my house. All right, here is a hill climb test. This is quite a steep hill. I'm not sure what the percentage grade on it is, but this is probably about as steep as you're going to regularly be encountering on any sort of commute. It's already struggling, 12, 11 miles an hour. Nine, eight. Six. Okay, nearing the top of the hill, six miles an hour is what it's maintained pretty much the whole time. Now we're flattening back out a little bit. Starting to pick up speed again. Yeah, so it did that hill, but not at a great speed. So it can do hills, but if you need regular hill climbing, then I would suggest getting something uh, dual motor. Overall, riding the scooter feels not too different from a rental scooter. Similar acceleration curve and speed. The handling and overall feel is also similar to rental scooters. If you are coming from using rental scooters often and are comfortable with them and just want one of your own, then this is an easy swap. This is not intended to diss this scooter anyway or say it's bad, but let me put it this way. If you want a scooter with almost identical performance and a slightly lower price and lighter weight, then I would suggest Highboy's other scooter, the S2 Pro. If you want something or need something dual motor with better hill climbing and speed and are willing to spend a little bit more money, then I would say go with the Mantis 8. The best reason to buy this scooter over the other two mentioned is if you really want the extra range and double battery option. If your commute is long and flat and you are on a budget then this is a great option. Or if you want a recreational or commuter scooter and really like the removable battery option that this scooter provides then this is one of the only scooters in this price range that you can buy with this option. The NEX5 is a scooter of really good quality and offers lots of unique features for the price. If you like what you see, you can pick one up at one of the links below. Get subscribed for upcoming range tests on this scooter and for more scooter and e-bike content. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.